we were doing 720p uh, uh, testing at one point in time and we eventually shifted up to 1080p. And the reason for that is we noticed with an RTX 4090, for example, let's say we tested 20 games and we looked into this, a, a good percentage of them, I don't know if it was quite half, but roughly half, would actually see either a small or quite substantial performance decrease when lowering the resolution below 1080p. I asked a few people at the time that sort of in the know with, you know, understand the architecture and all that. Their explanation basically was that you have so many CUDA cores now that the GPU is not being efficiently fed. There's not enough pixel data to efficiently feed the GPU. So you get idle cores and, and things just don't work as efficiently as they could. Um, so yeah, I think we, we found Tandy P to be the sweet spot and that's why we test that. Also, back to my other pet peeve that I spoke of earlier, um, I think 1080p makes sense because it is an actual resolution that a large percentage of gamers do, do game at. Just to put a bow on this, like how would you summarize what you found with the GeForce versus Radeon testing in Battlefield 6? Because I actually thought the C this NVIDIA CPU overhead thing, which I think you've been one of the people who's been most at the forefront and noticing and then testing that. I mean, but to my memory, actually, in your Battlefield video, you're like, this actually isn't even the worst example. This is just a very noticeable one because you want a high frame rate in this hard to run game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely seen examples of up to about 30%. So it is much more noticeable on, well, first of all, lower end CPUs. And it's a difficult one because for a quite a long time now, AMD hasn't had a true flagship. But yeah, it's highly likely if you take a 9070 XT and a 5070 Ti and you test them on 10th gen Intel CPUs and Zen 3 CPUs, you will find that the 9070 XT ends up being considerably faster than the GeForce GPU on a lot of games, um, like you know Rainbow Six Siege, all the games we've shown. It, it's a weird one because there can be games where you expect to see it and then you just don't, like the overhead issue just isn't really there or it's very minimal. It'll be more for your DirectX 12 titles um, where you start to see the problem. So I think with Rainbow Six Siege, we were seeing it with uh, Vulcan. But yeah, it's the people with the uh, older CPUs that would notice a difference. So even, you know, if you do have an older CPU and you've upgraded to a 9060 XT or a 5060 Ti, you would get a much better experience with a 9060 XT on a slower CPU um, in a game like Battlefield 6. It's difficult to test because you really do need to test a whole heap of configurations to clearly show what's going on. Because it could just be that the 9070 XT is faster than the 5072 in that game or whatever it can. So you really need like a higher end GeForce GPU and then maybe some lower end ones. Like a 60, other. a 90, 80 XT versus the yeah. 50, but then also we can compare it across the stack. And then you need two high end CPUs, like a high end Intel and a high end AMD CPU to say when you remove the CPU limits, look, so... You're looking at weeks worth of testing to, to try and show the thing, which is why a lot of people didn't really dive in that much. But I think at this point in time, people pretty well accepting that there is an overhead issue there with the, the GeForce GPUs. And you can even measure it um, solely by looking at power consumption. I see. So the CPU had to work harder, which actually made the whole overall system really not that much more efficient. Yeah, there's some sort of scheduling or something being handed over to the CPU, some additional task that the CPU needs to perform which increases the CPU's load, its workload, which means it consumes more power. So by combining CPU power draw with GPU power draw, we were getting a more accurate look at actual GPU efficiency. That's an easy way to see the overhead problem is by looking at power draw. At least in the past, I think NVIDIA has really benefited from the fact that if you wanted to game in 4K, which is where they did best versus AMD, at least since, I don't know, RDNA 1 or before, I did, like maybe after Vega, you were limited to maybe 60 and eventually 120 frames per second. Now, I'm talking to you with a 4K 240 hertz OLED monitor that I got for well under, I think for $700 months ago. Like they're reasonably priced now. So this handicap bonus NVIDIA's had where you couldn't even go above 120 in 4K, so you're never going to see the CPU overhead issue. That's going to be gone next gen. And even consoles come with 120 hertz modes now. 120s, and I think yeah, I saw you tweet about this, that like 60 is the new minimum. It didn't used to be, but it, it really is. And even one, 120 is really the new 60 and 240 is the new, oh, the new 120. Yeah, I'd hope so. in, that, in that world where AMD is supposedly preparing a 154 compute unit model 
Could we see a huge issue arise if NVIDIA hasn't fixed this by 2027? Because we're no longer going to be in that world where, I mean, we're of way stronger Zen 6 CPUs, 4K goes to 240, and I do not think everyone's just going to go to 8K as much as NVIDIA wants us to for their marketing. I think this issue could just be something that explodes, maybe even kind of like the 8 gigabyte RAM issue has exploded recently, where time really caught up with this problem more than we expected it to, more than I expected it to. There's definitely the potential for it to become more of a known issue, more more of a problem for NVIDIA. As I said, though, there are games where you sort of expect it would be a problem because it's a CPU demanding game and then you test it and there's really no overhead issue to be seen. And then there's other games where it's terrible. If they had a 5090 competitor, then I think we'd be discussing this a bit more. But at the moment, it's... It, again, it's a tough one because I think it probably is still really relevant for the people that are on a tight budget. So yeah, it's definitely a subject worth looking into. At this point in time, I can't say in late 2025 how serious it is. We'll see what happens. I mean, I mean, supposedly Zen 6 is going to go to 7 gigahertz or something, so maybe it won't matter. Maybe like right when it should have mattered, when we have 240 hertz monitors, maybe we'll get these Nova Lake and Zen 6 CPUs that bail NVIDIA out again. But I, I just still wonder, you know, because there's... 240 hertz is going to be standard. I, I do wonder if they can't hide behind it that much longer. It's like it's a hardware issue. It's not just software. Well, they, they will have new hardware by then as well. They they claim to have reduced the overhead issue um, with the, the latest architecture. Uh, that's possibly true. Again, I, I'd have to compare you know current generation with previous generation models to see if the CPU overhead has changed at all because I, I actually have no insight on that whatsoever. I just... I do recall NVIDIA addressing that, saying that they've lowered that overhead issue. So yeah, what the future holds, no idea, because there's so many variables there that can change. It could be just a continuation of what we've seen to date. It could become more obvious or it could get solved entirely, but it's a problem they need to solve. Finding great candidates to hire can be as time consuming as sorting through the nonsense being quoted as leaks on rumor websites. You're always waiting for the right candidate to apply, sorting through resumes, trying to get in touch with potential candidates, and frankly, finding candidates that aren't just good, but then also actively looking for jobs at the same time that they are qualified. Well, the good news is that the future of hiring looks a lot brighter than the future of some of these rumor websites, and that's because ZipRecruiter's latest tools and features help you speed up and find the right people for your roles so you save valuable time. That's right, this piece of content is sponsored by ZipRecruiter and you can try it out for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash work. And you really should because with ZipRecruiter's new advances, you can easily find and connect with qualified candidates in minutes. And if you see a candidate you're really interested in, well, you can unlock their contact info instantly. Plus over 320,000 new resumes are added to ZipRecruiter monthly, which means you can reach more potential hires and fill roles sooner. So support Moore's Law is Dead by using ZipRecruiter in Save Time Hiring. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And if you go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work right now, you can try it for free. Again, you will be supporting Moore's Law is Dead. It'll cost you nothing and it will save you time. ZipRecruiter.com slash work. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire.